This is Tyler. When Tyler was two years old, differences between him and other kids his age were noticeable. He would not respond to his name. He would not point to objects when asked. His parents were worried. Their research pointed to the autism spectrum disorder, but they quickly dismissed that idea. No, that couldn't be it. It wasn't until Tyler was six years old entering the first grade that he was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder, a group of complex developmental disabilities that cause problem with social interaction and communication. Tyler's social, behavioral, and language issues were prominent. At age six, he had a 22-word vocabulary, while his peers were virtual chatterboxes. He had trouble with his memory as he couldn't even remember the names of his own family members. Though a sweet kid at heart, Tyler didn't interact much with others. He didn't make eye contact. He barely smiled and most certainly hated to be touched. The truth is, when someone mentions autism, we tend to push it away, pretend like we already know about it. The media likes to show us all the feel-good stories, like the child with autism who is a great singer on Britain's Got Talent, or the other one who is their student body president. We pretend to be aware, but that isn't the truth. Autism can be sad, frustrating, and isolating. In the United States alone, autism affects one in 68 individuals and over 100 million worldwide. Over one third of adults with autism are left unemployed and over 66% of kids with autism are bullied. In fact, I only became aware of autism in my freshman year of high school when I visited the special education community for autistic individuals. Here, I saw kids my age struggle to be heard, shut down from opportunities, even though their promising talents were so immense. I spent my afternoons with them. I would teach them the alphabet, play games with them, do anything I could. And while I was there, I noticed something that fascinated me, something I found interesting. These kids, who were somehow deemed unusual, not considered normal by society standards, were incredibly comfortable using technology. They were messaging friends, playing games, taking pictures, and it was here that it struck me. Perhaps I could help them a different way. Perhaps I could use technology, create an app, to help them with their vocabulary and their emotions. There was just one problem. I couldn't code at all. When you need to create an app, what do you write? Where do you write it? How do you even write it? How does that work? I was so intimidated. I had seen others do it, but somehow when it was my turn, I was just lost. I didn't even know what to make my app about. With two other friends, I reached out to specialists, mentors, directors. We asked them what was going to help, what was needed, and what was really going to make a difference. The real question was, how are we going to build it? I quite frankly spent hours together scrolling through Stack Overflow, looking at YouTube and Khan Academy. At one point, I didn't even like the app I was building, so much that I had to scratch the entire thing, rebuild, restart, and rethink. I felt like I'd failed. Here I was, a teenager, trying to balance academic course load and build an app. I was overwhelmed. But after a couple of challenging months, my friends and I had finally created the app Alleviate. Alleviate is a combination of two features that target the significant portion of obstacles faced by those individuals with autism. The first feature, is the interaction feature. This feature teaches them about daily activities, emotions, objects, allowing them to build their vocabulary. 
The app shows them a picture. Here we have a woman who's upset. It then asks them a question out loud, like, how is this lady feeling? After hearing that question, the student can then respond back to the app with an answer, like, sad. What's really exciting about this feature, looking at the technical side, is that it makes use of a speech-to-text API. And what this API does is it does the translation. It does the converting from your voice to actual words that can then be processed by the computer, allowing for that conversation to be had. The second feature is the relaxation feature. This feature aims to calm and relax anxiety. It has meditative tracks, calming music, and a personalizable breathing simulator. The simulator is actually set to the pace of calm breathing, and that expanding and contracting nature then allows for them to inhale and exhale, calming them down. I was so excited with my product. I gave it to every single student at the center I had met. That was the most rewarding moment I could have asked for. They were actually using the app. They were breathing in and out with the simulator. They were speaking to the feature. It somehow felt like I had given them the attention they needed, given them a gift meant only for them. And I couldn't have been happier than in that moment. The truth is, I should add, not everything was perfect. There were still errors. Certain features weren't working properly. Others were confusing. And I had to use their feedback to then improve my app. I tell you my story because I want to inspire you as young adults to take time to find ways to create a better future for the people around you. Last year, I taught over 200 kids from public schools how to code because I wanted to give them the tools and teach them a little more about technology so they don't feel intimidated like I did and can help their communities as well. So whether you choose to use music, art, science, technology, we can create a better tomorrow by starting today. Thank you.